make sure that you know where you are. Um, if you were to call from here, it's probably just going to pop up at uh, the, you know, the Register Museum and Science Center address. It's not necessarily going to say where you are here. So be aware of your surroundings. Um, in Monroe County, we actually have a really good 911 system that can kind of populate your address. But if you're not in a surrounding area like we are, if you're out in the rural areas, it might not do that. So again, make sure you know where you are. Uh, let the operator know that you do know stop the bleed. They understand what that means, and they will then walk you through any additional um, items that you're going to need to do. So bleeding, you're going to want to find a source of bleeding. How do we know that somebody has life-threatening bleeding? It's a continuous bleeding. There's a large volume. It could be pooling. The other thing is you may not know exactly where they are bleeding from. You may need to take, especially at this time of year where we're all wearing puffer jackets, you might need to take that off. <laughs> Um, do not cut a puffer jacket or you will have uh, down all over full of blood and it's just a big mess. Uh, there might be multiple places, again, the same reason for uh, taking off heavy clothing. So we have three different zones of bleeding and uh, they all are handled just a little differently depending. So we've got the arms and legs. We have, we call them junctional zones or t-shirt zones, which is your armpits, your groin, and your neck, and then your torso, so this big area here. So our first measure is gonna be compression. Direct pressure to a wound. You focus on where it's bleeding. You use just enough gauze or cloth to cover the injury. And if the pressure stops it, you don't stop putting pressure on. You continue with pressure until help gets there. Uh, does anybody want to tell me what they think they would use as a cloth item to, to put pressure on? Clothing. Clothing. Does it have to be clean or sterile? No. It does not. Uh, pretty much everybody that comes through our door with a traumatic injury gets um, a shot of antibiotics as soon as they come through the door. So let us worry about infection. If you can stop the bleeding, that's the more important. Um, does anybody have a glove box full of napkins from fast food restaurants? I do. They work great. Anything like that works great. We have a towel. Anything you can use is going to be wonderful. So after pressure, if you still have an area that continues to bleed, you can then pack it. Especially larger wounds, if you see this great picture, if I'm just putting pressure on top of a large wound like that, all the blood's gonna continue to pool under it, which is why you need to pack it, and then we do pressure. It hurts, they're not gonna like it. If they live, then it'll be great. So compressive, compression, compression with packing works really well for arms and legs, uh, the neck and armpits, not so much for the torso, and I, I'll tell you why in a little bit. The last thing that we're going to talk to you about is tourniquets. Now tourniquets um, have gotten a bad rap in the past, and it used to be you never ever ever applied a tourniquet that's changed over the last 20 some years of conflicts um, with our military. They actually were finding that they had a lot of people that made it to the military hospitals that didn't live and they were wondering why that was. It was because they bled to death before they got to the hospital. So they've done a lot of research, a lot of training, and actually using a tourniquet um, is actually one of the best ways to prevent um, a terminal hemorrhage. So we actually, if it looks like somebody is really bleeding horribly, we just tell you to go right to a tourniquet. We have patients that come in um, as far down as the Pennsylvania border with a tourniquet on that have no repercussions from the tourniquet. 
Um, it can be on four hours or more without having any permanent injury. Um, so what you want to do is apply it two to three inches above the wound. We actually teach you put it high and tight. So if you have an arm wound, put it all the way up as high as you can. You never want to put it over a joint because that could injure the joint. And you tighten it until the bleeding stops. Not to the point where somebody says, oh, that hurts, that's tight enough. Um, bleeding has to stop. It does hurt. Again, dying hurts worse than a tourniquet. Uh, usually we get patients, two seconds while I finish my thought. <laughs> we get patients to come in with the tourniquet on and they are no longer complaining about their injury, but about the tourniquet. So, yes, sir. Correct. Correct, yes. Yeah. If you apply it, if I have a wound down here and I put it right on my elbow, I'm going to do damage to that joint. So if it was your arm and it was in the lower arm, would you apply it above? I still put it up almost to my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I'll tell you why. When you're in this situation, it's kind of, you get a little flustered, like you get anxious, you don't know what you're doing necessarily. We've had people that come in with a tourniquet on the wrong side of the wound. So it needs to be between the wound and your heart. If you apply it as high as you can and tight, that kind of deletes that that issue is going to happen. Do not remove the tourniquet. We're not going to release it a little bit and then tighten it back up. Um, if you think about when you have blood drawn, right, they use a tourniquet. It's not a true tourniquet, it res restricts blood flow, and actually what it's doing is making it so that blood comes out more quickly, so that they can take it out. That's what happens. So if you're going to not turn it all the way, or you're going to let it off and then turn it back again, um, your patient, your person's going to bleed actually more than if you just left it. Um, you can apply it to yourself, you can apply it to others, um, and we can, we'll, we've got all this fun stuff up here for you guys to pla practice wound packing, practice tourniquets. We are like, I think we're immune now that our arms don't hurt anymore when we have tourniquets applied, so you can use us, you can do it on yourself, on each other. It can be applied over clothes, so if you have a long sleeve shirt on, it's not an issue to put it over. Just big, bulky, heavy sweatshirts, jackets. Again, it hurts. And sometimes a second tourniquet might be required to actually stop the bleeding. If you have somebody that has big, huge arm muscles, big, huge thighs, um, one might not be adequate because arteries tend to kind of like move a little bit. So you may need a second one and that's completely appropriate. So the American College of Surgeons, which is who um, puts out this program, recommends, they're called combat application tourniquets, which is everything we have up here. That's what you're going to see throughout the whole city. EMS, um, our police providers, they all carry these um, combat application tourniquets. So let me go back to the torso. If you think about it from here up, how do you think that works with compressing? It doesn't work really great, right? Up here you've got all these ribs and they're meant to protect what's below it. So you can't really put pressure on it. You can pack it. It probably is not going to do a whole lot. The converse is down here. If you have an injury down here and you try to put pressure on it, everything shifts to the other side or goes the other way. It's, it's really movable down here. So again, you can put pressure on, it's probably not going to help. Anything in your torso really needs to get to a trauma center as soon as possible. Um, and then that gets fixed. Children. So children, my son, I had a boy, do stupid things. They just they fall out of trees, they ride motorcycles, all that stuff. So children, you can do everything we've talked about. 
the only um, contraindication is how small your tourniquet goes. So if you have somebody that's little, little, little arms, little arms, tourniquet's not going to work. It's not going to put enough pressure. You actually can hold manual pressure just as well and compress it just with your hands. Um, large deep wounds, same thing. Adults and kids are the same. Packet pressure. If you can put a tourniquet on, put a tourniquet on. What do we think about impaled objects? Leave them alone. Exactly. Sure. If they're bleeding out, absolutely. Turning uh, impaled objects. And pack around it. You can pack around it, certainly. Especially if it's your torso where you can't put a tourniquet on. Um, improvised tourniquets. Did anybody learn at Boy Scouts to use the cravat and the tongue depressor? Same thing with the uh, blood donation tourniquet, right? You don't have adequate pressure. If you look at this, this is a nice inch wide. You need that width and the consistent pressure to um, close off those arteries so they stop bleeding. If it's the only thing you have and you want to try it, you can try it, but it's probably not going to stop the bleeding. Loss of an arm or leg if somebody's had an amputation. Do we apply a tourniquet? Yes. Yes. Sure, absolutely. And I'll tell you, we had um, our former injury prevention coordinator came across a young man who had a motorcycle accident about two years ago. And um, the young man had an amputation and he applied a tourniquet and he made it to the trauma center and lived. So you could have one of these in your car at any time and come across somebody who could save a life. How about pain? Again, it hurts. Doesn't matter. You're going to thank somebody if you live and you have a turn again. So again, your personal safety is first. Alert 911. Call them and let them know where you are, what's going on, before you start. Because once you start pressure, you can't let that pressure off. It's kind of like once you start CPR compressions, you're kind of committed to it. Uh, compressed pressure packing, tourniquet, and wait for help to arrive. StopTheBleed.org is a great resource. There's lots of wonderful videos on there with survivor stories. Um, up here we have tourniquets, we have dummy legs, packing material for you all to try and use. Kate and I will demonstrate to you all first if you kind of choose an area. But we also have bleeding control kits. You will see in um, local areas that there are actually bleeding control kits. Where the AEDs are in Wegmans, they have bleeding control kits. The lifeguards at the YMCA's have bleeding control kits. I believe Tops now has them. There's a couple local businesses. The University of Rochester and all of our AED boxes also have bleeding control kits. They're really nice because they have the tourniquet, scissors, a marker, um, an emergency blanket, gloves. Some of them now have masks. Um, and all of that, if you go to stopthebleed.org, they actually have a little store. Nobody makes money off of it. They, um, the company North American Rescue has a deal with the American College of Surgeons to offer these at a great price. You can get just a tourniquet, you can get a whole bleeding control kit. If you decide to get one, I would encourage you not to buy the $5.99 one off of Amazon. The plastic breaks all the time. It's the same thing. You'll be like wasting your time. Um, they're nice to have. We all have them in our vehicles because you never know where you're going to run into it. Nice to have at home if you have anybody. All of us fall down the stairs. Um, I think that's it. The other plug, so the only thing more tragic than a death is a death that could have been prevented, which is really what we're trying to um, prevent. The other thing we'll put a plug out for is um, 
we go through a lot of blood at the University of Rochester for our trauma patients. So if you consider donating blood, we would definitely appreciate it. Um, yes, sir. If you were to apply a second tournament, a tournament because it was needed, yeah. you put it on top of the first tournament? Or Physically on top? No, you put it right next to it. Yeah. And as far as my other question would be, if you're having to pack it at the moment, I assume you can pack it with the same material. Mm -hmm. Because you have to do it, anything is okay. Anything is okay. Can you repeat the question, please? So it was, if you had to apply a second tourniquet, would you put it on top of the first one? You wouldn't put it on top. You would put it directly abutted to it, right next to it. The other question was packing for um, open wounds, anything like that. It doesn't matter what material you use. You can put it anywhere. If you get a tourniquet on and the bleeding stops, you could then pack the wound. You don't have to, as long as the bleeding is stopped. Um, that's the more important thing. So if you were using something like a bandana, would you want it to be an inch or two inches wide? Would you fold it so it was, I mean, doesn't matter? If you're using a bandana to try to make a tourniquet? Yes. Would that work? Probably not. I would encourage you to use the bandana to uh, pack the wound and use pressure. You couldn't roll it up. And you can try to. Yeah. You're not going to, because what are you going to do? Wind it up and then you have to stand there and hold it? That's not it. I mean, that wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work. How would clothes work? Clo the clothes you're just using to pack the wound, to apply pressure and or pack the wound and then put pressure on. Correct. Correct. Wait till you try it. Yes. Go ahead, sir. What about the product that it's called bleed stop or stop bleed? It's a, it's a powder of some sort? Yeah, so um, we have up here, it's called Quick Clot. So this is actually impregnated gauze which you can purchase, and there used to be a powder. I don't know if there still is that powder for stopping bleeding, um, which you certainly can try. This, uh, we, you don't necessarily have to have it impregnated. Regular gauze is gonna work just as well. We usually use this quick clot or combat gauze in the hospital to pack wounds on their way to the operating room. Yes? Thank you, yes. So treating for shock, yes. Um, because here's what happens. People, when they start to lose blood, then they start to get cold, and cold can't clot. So if you can treat for shock, stop the bleeding first, but you can put them down, cover them up, wait until EMS gets there. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. So why don't we, Half people at one table, half at another. Kate and I can demonstrate wound packing and tourniquet use, and then you can all try it. Um, Bruce has our contact information. If you have questions, have more interest, uh, we are happy to talk to anybody, help you with anything. We have certificates up here for you that you've participated in this course, and um, we really appreciate it. Again, if people are willing to do this, and get patients to us alive, that that helps so much. So come on up. We don't